perfect. The familiars are diplomatic. Yes. Well, well no, no. We not maybe. Exactly. And the familiars are dead fucking serious. I have never had family my whole life. Rooster. Have you ever had eight feet of barbarian before? Worthy. Those who trifle with magic might meet a terrible fate. Thibodeau. Run tell your big, fat, ugly ogre mama that you can't even fight off a bunch of little kids. Captain Chowder. Ah! Shalindar! And, well, John. Hey, you can tell you got the good stuff, man. Keep her head on a swivel and use your noggin. I'm gonna split you open like a crab and spill your guts on the floor and nail your carcass to the church door on a Sunday, you tuppany fuck. Tune in tonight and watch this group of professional actors as they offer up a one-of-a-kind, fully improvised, utterly spectacular adventure through the worlds of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, oh, shit, this, buddy. This is nothing, man! We're all gonna die! <laughs> oh my god, it happens. Do you even know how many people will want to smash me seeing me on this? <laughs>what's up everybody welcome to another episode of the familiars we are a group of actors that are telling a long-form improvised story using the rules of dungeons and dragons and the published content of wizards of the coast we are so psyched that you are here with us if you dig what we do please like us subscribe to us follow us it really means a lot but no matter what we are just so happy that you are here we are in the midst of an incredibly intense session here in Storm King's Thunder. But before we get started, I would like to introduce our incredible cast. First and foremost, we have Alex playing Rooster, our dragonborn barbarian. We have Annalise playing Worthy, our tiefling cleric. We have Austin Durant <laughs> playing Thibodeau our human bard we have captain chowder busy on broadway we have uh john doherty <laughs> playing all non-player characters serving as my code dm and last but absolutely not least we have our special guest zach appleman once again playing Oren in a tight spot we'll see exactly where we may uh pick up with him uh, and we're going to play some Dungeons and Dragons but I also want to say uh, once again we are very lucky to have Gold Rooms aka yeah! Gold Rooms aka Josh yeah. Legg with us today um, doing the music Woo! I mean it's been so incredible uh, and we are very lucky to have him um, that being said let's start off with a little bit of a recap the Familiars find themselves in Golden Fields. Again, Golden Fields is the breadbasket of the Sword Coast. And they were sent here by Lyrell Silverhand to help defend the town against giant incursions. The town had been attacked recently by hill giants, lobbing huge boulders at its tall 60-foot walls. And 
they had retreated quickly thereafter, but uh, in the middle of the night, the party was awakened by Orin, who had seen a group of goblins, ogres, and uh, bugbears uh, ransacking the middle of Golden Fields, the center of town. There were bodies of farmers lying everywhere. There was a group of children that the awakened tree, Lefairless, was defending, and the party rushed into their aid. They took care of an entire group of uh, goblins, bugbears, and ogres, and then quickly took care, thanks to Captain Chowder's casting of Fireball, to a second group. Unfortunately, then they saw beings larger than they had ever seen prior. Two hill giants were lumbering over the abbey of uh, the Harvest Home Abbey, uh, in Golden Fields, and Orin knew that the bell needed to be rung in order to alert the security forces on the walls uh, surrounding Golden Fields. And that's where we find ourselves at the top of our session today. You saw Basically, these folks, their heads just hovering over the abbey at uh, Golden Fields. And that's what Orin, with an invisibility cast from Thibodeau, saw as he snuck into the abbey and successfully rung the bell. Unfortunately, the giants heard it as well and began attacking the abbey itself. You saw the uh, roof of this abbey crumble, fall. Uh, you don't know exactly where Orin is or exactly what happened, but Thibodeau, can you read the description of the invisibility spell for us oh um yeah i know that it wears off if uh if Orin were to cast a spell or to attack anything it would it would it would uh, okay. end um but not with damage okay. but not with damage no okay i, I think that makes sense what? So, we're going to be using the suffocation rules in 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. So, for today's session, Oren, you uh, rang that bell as loud as you could, even past hearing the slams coming in above you uh, from the giants. You kept ringing it, knowing that that sound needed to reach every corner of Golden Fields. Now, for the party, you'll all remember that Golden Fields' walls are, I mean, probably a mile to two miles away from you. So there is still some time in between when the guards will hear this bell and when they'll get to you. But Orin, even as the ceiling started crumbling around you, boulders falling left and right. You tried to keep ringing the bell until the bell itself fell from the ceiling. And that's the last thing that you remember. I'm going to need you to roll a constitution saving throw. All right. Come on, Orin, Brewster says from far away. <laughs> Ten. You tied the difficulty class, thus succeeding. <gasps> Oren. Nice. You <gasps> wake up and immediately just start coughing. There's dust and rubble everywhere, and you are. You try to move, and you can't. Your legs and body are underneath 
huge boulders, but you didn't fall unconscious from the blows. You are down to one hit point. And now I need you to make a strength saving throw. You try to push the boulder that's on your torso. And you almost get it to move. But then you see that there is a larger rock on top of it that as you move this boulder begins to totter and falls and (laughs) crushes you in place. You can't breathe. What is your constitution score on your character sheet? The constitution score, uh, plus two? Every round, Orin is going to make a strength saving throw to see if he can get this boulder off of him. If he succeeds, he will be able to at least breathe but not move. If he fails, he will have the amount of time that Dungeons and Dragons says you have to uh, survive without being able to breathe, which for Orin is two rounds of combat. So the top of the round. No! Ah, says Rooster from so far away, not understanding these rules and never having heard of this before. Ah. Joby, Joby, how far away is the party from the the church, the abbey that is being attacked? I measured it just before we started. You are 120 feet away. Shit. So, I'm going to put you guys up here. And so you are here. And this is what you see. You are just off the map. Still hidden. Sorry, Orin's not here. But just for reference, this is what this is about how far away you are. Um, and we had it that you guys are all huddled in the behind the last house before you get to the abbey, seeing all this take place. All right. Now, um, as you guys see this. You hear Captain Chowder come up and say, hold please. All right, gang. Sounds like the Calvary is on its way. I'm going to check on the children. And Captain Chowder turns and runs back to town to help the children that you guys had uh, barricaded in to one of the houses where the, you had tried to sort of make a barrier of fire around that house. But you guys are now looking at this and I need everybody to roll initiative. Including me? Yes. All right. We have Worthy. Oh wait, 13. hang on, I gotta roll. Per usual, I now can't find my initiative. See, I'm just, I'm, I'm real I'm real on brand for, for this. Oh yeah, there we go. You're suffocating, man. Rooster. Be easy on yourself. With a seven, Miros with a 15. Tib with a five. Great. And I'm just rolling for the monsters. Top of the round. It's the hill giants. Fudge! Oh, God. 
You guys can see now that there is one hill giant with long stringy hair and another hill giant with uh, uh, pretty much almost bald. Um, and they, having um, finished smashing into the abbey, the one with the, the long stringy hair and this like string of what looked to be small rocks but only because of the uh, uh, only because of how big this being is you see that they are probably these huge boulders painted in these different colors um, looks up and just moves this these this ropey stringy hair out of her face and calls out this deep bassy roar grumble and you can see that the other hill giant looks in what feels like slow motion to her as they begin lumbering towards the woods uh, on the uh, t to the uh, uh, left to the what would it be the west of the abbey and begin moving towards the forest. Let's see here. And each step they make, you can all now, being this close, feel the entire ground shake. Um, just checking their movement. Yeah, they've got 40 feet. And as they move, you can see the ogres looking up and beginning to turn in the direction that uh, they are uh, going as well, uh, even though it's not their turn. And you can see the bugbears just screaming, waving their arms, trying to get their attention, and it just doesn't seem to be taking any kind of effect. But for the moment, they are moving away from the abbey. Next up, we have Miros. Miros, you see this whole thing going down. What would you like to do with your turn? As soon as Miros sees the the giant destroying the roof of the abbey, he, he lets out a call. He says, no, Orin, no. But then he, he stays quiet as he sees you know, the giants continue to destroy the, the roof. Uh, and then as Miros sees the giants walk away, Miros is going to, I'm gonna ready an action. Mm -hmm. So if the giants come back, if they start moving back towards the abbey or towards our party, I'm going to throw, I'm gonna use my last superiority die and throw a hand ax at one of those two little, are they goblins? The two little guys. Those are bugbears. Uh, it's just because of the size. Bugbears. Yep, the two bugbears closest. One yeah. of those two bugbears. Great. Okay, so you're making a beeline. I'm just going to stay crouched. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, and I missed what you were saying in the beginning. Are you running directly towards the abbey yeah. or are you staying put? Okay. I'm gonna ready an action. So if the giants Great, come back towards the abbey, if they turn around and move back, I'm gonna hurl my hand axe at one of the bugbears. Okay, and you're staying put? Uh, yes. Great, okay. Miros has his action readied. You see a muscled arm grasp the hand axe and any, uh, remnants of drunkenness that you had seen prior is gone in Miros. There is a laser-like focus and a, um, a stillness that is invigorating to all of you. Um, it is the ogre's turn. The ogres are going to just try to start moving uh, in line towards what they believe to be the forest um, and they are going to make, with their action, a perception check with disadvantage. Ooh. 
Mm. First one Ooh. with disadvantage is a one. Mm. Second one. Everyone make a stealth check. Shit, shit, shit. Sense Gotta beat a 12. Go. Gotta beat a 12. It's gonna be a group average. Except for you, Zach. Okay. We've got Miros with a 15. We've got Worthy with an 8. Rooster with a 20. And the average beats it. You guys all <laughs> see the ogres turn towards you, and you see it in time, and duck back behind. Miros uh, motions for everyone to get back behind cover, and you duck behind cover. The ogres take a look uh, back towards the direction that they're moving, and up next, Worthy. I speak giant. Do I understand? What did they say? Do I understand? Yes. So, you heard one of the giants say, Goo will need more food. And the other one basically just nodded and smiled in approval and looked, when they looked sort of down into the abbey, said, No food here, over there towards trees. And that's where they're moving towards. And that's the direction of the children? No, luckily the children are uh, north of you, and they seem to be moving to the west for the moment. All right. Uh, uh, <laughs> so we, we've got to get Orin out of there. We have to. Um, how far away are we from those bugbears? 65 feet to Orin. 110. 110. Um, I want to see if I can move to those trees just to the west of us without getting the notice of the bugbears. You want to... Exactly. Sorry. Exactly. Where? Where would you? You'd like to go here? See, there, those that little grove of trees, not where the giants are heading, but just yeah. like right near us. Is there? I want to see if I can get into those trees without the bugbears noticing. You can with a stealth check. Okay. Eighteen. They're not actively looking for you, so their passive perception. Yeah, it's not high. You beat it. Worthy, are you going? Yes, I'm going into the trees. Worthy makes it to the trees unnoticed. What else would you like to do? Anything else in your turn? Uh, that's it for now. All right. Ro uh, Worthy makes a beeline for the trees unnoticed. Rooster, it's your turn. What would you like to do? I turn to... Uh Kiwi, and I say, can you make me the invisibles? I'm and not. I, okay, great. And I, cause if you can make me invisible, then I'm gonna dash 80 feet towards Orin. Cause I can, I'm a good lifter. I'm good strength kind of okay. dragon. So I don't know if this is classic D&D, &D, but we can say that you're gonna hold your action and your movement until Tibido's turn. And Great. once Thibodeau casts invisibility on you, then you will book it, and uh, Thibodeau, you'll have your turn, uh, at least movement and bonus action, okay? Great. Great, okay. So, Rooster, you crouch down, ready to bolt towards Orin as fast as you can. Go like this. <laughs> Orin, your, I, don't, I didn't copy down your initiative. Let me... Uh, 20. 20. So I missed you. Oren, um, make a strength saving throw. All right. Okay. There we go. Mm. Oh, wait. No, saving throw. Sorry. There we go. Sixteen. 
some force in you, Oren, that is operating beyond your conscious control is trying to lift this boulder up as you're sort of coming in and out of consciousness. And you get yourself a little bit of space, arms shaking in order to breathe. The group doesn't know this, so nobody else knows this. All you guys see is just this uh, rubble around you. But you know that you can at least breathe for another round. All right? Nice. Is, he, is he still invisible? Yes. Um, yeah. uh, until you cast invisibility on Rooster, Thibodeau. Oh, right, yeah. I believe it's a concentration spell. It is a concentration, yeah. Okay. Thibodeau, it's your turn. Do you cast invisibility? Um, if yeah. you don't want to do that, you don't have to. But okay. No, I'm trying to. I'm trying to think of what's the most economical way because I kind of want to come with you. Yeah, jump on me. If I jump on your Piggyback. back, if I if I'm on Rooster's back, can Rooster still dash? And then I'm do I get my movement after that? <laughs> We're right next to each other. You're pushing I'm it. best friends. <laughs> um, it's like we're one mind. I'll say uh, Rooster has to make a strength save, and it's got to be your... Um, got to be the... Uh, okay. 17. Can you give All me right. Bardic Inspiration as a bonus? Y- oh, yes, oh. I can. I can. Yeah. So, uh, I didn't know what D and D was three months ago, four so months I, ago. I'm so I, proud of me. <laughs> <laughs> I doing? jump on Rooster's back and I start singing this song into their ear, into Rooster's ear. Um, it, this like it's like the 1812 overture <laughs> or something. <laughs> um, and um, <laughs> I cast invisibility. So Rooster's invisible. I'm invisible. Yeah. And I uh and I I tell I tell roosters to, to, to run. Okay. You cast invisibility. Orin, you see your hands appear on the rocks. Um Rooster makes a sixteen. Um you turn invisible. Oh, I'm sorry, you said a strength saving throw? True, yeah. But my strength saving throws have plus six, so I feel like I I'm gonna keep did that. It. I'm gonna keep that roll, and we're gonna add the plus six as opposed to the plus three. You, uh, Thibodeau, feel the rippling muscles underneath the scale of wow. Rooster's back, um, and it is just so comforting as you both turn invisible and you start booking it eighty feet. Gets you 80 feet. Pretty close. Now, here's my question. <laughs> yeah. Do I still get my movement? I, 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 w- I wouldn't be invisible, but I could jump off Rooster's back and yes. get another 30 feet. There's how it's not going to be totally OP. Um, you now are right up on it. And yes, you would, but you would lose invisibility. Right. How close? I can't see the grid. How close? How far away is that into the abbey? You are you can, 30 feet to the rubble, and you don't know where Orin is. Okay. But you do, because we have a map. <laughs> um... Well, I wouldn't run into the front. I think I would run into the side there. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'll that's where the... I mean the front is still pretty much intact. It's the back that's just completely smashed. All right. So Thibodeau, okay. you hop off of Rooster. Nice, t- nice round. Nice round. Um, I just imagine like uh, a, a, like a tennis. Just everyone just like applauding Thibodeau on this round of Dungeons and Dragons. As you hop off, you come into full view and run to this edge of the rubble. Mm -hmm. 
And that's it. I don't think I could do anything else. We're gonna call it there. Really milked that round. <laughs> yeah, Rooster, you are still invisible in this bed of flowers, and Thibodeau, you have made it to the rubble. As you're running, just before you get behind the uh, the the uh, midsection of this abbey, you look and see the bugbears see you. <gasps> One of the bugbears. Um, turns and yells out in a monstrous grunt and points to the other uh, bugbear. That bugbear begins moving uh, on their turn now uh, towards the abbey, triggering Miros's action. Miros, go ahead and make oh, nice. your oh, ranged attack. I have so much stomach acid from playing this game. I get so nervous. Rooster mutters. Miros. Um, what is the range on the hand axe? It'll say it next to it. There's going to be two numbers. 20 feet, and then uh, the outside range is 60 feet. Make this with disadvantage. Oh. Okay. It's heartbreaking. So, um, the bugbear begins to move uh, towards the abbey. Both of them, as there is a uh, hand axe that just thunk hits the ground next to them. They look up. One of them sees you, Miros, and the other one uh, calls out and uh, orders it uh, in in goblin uh, to you. So one of the bugbears is running towards Thibodeau, and the other one begins to make it towards you. You see it take a javelin out from behind its back and a javelin comes at you. Miros. AC 16. You jump to the side. Worthy, you see the old Miros uh, in full effect as this javelin is thrown directly at him and he rolls to the side as it sticks into the ground. Um, this bugbear comes around, sees you, Thibodeau, and same. What's your AC? Um, I believe it is... Hold on, sorry. Doesn't matter. It's more 13. than a seven. As this javelin uh, slams and skitters off uh, uh, into the rubble next to you. That is the bugbear's turn. Top of the round. Orin, make a strength saving throw. 16. Nice. You are just able to maybe get a little bit more purchase over this boulder, but you feel just as if the difficulty class for this strength saving throw has gotten harder <laughs> and you baby beat it by one and the next time you do it it might be even harder but i'll say that you Thibodeau, see a little bit of rock movement uh mm -hmm. in one section of the rubble okay um the hill giants see the bugbears begin to move and throw javelins. No. Though. No, but maybe they don't. <sighs> this hill giant begins to move back. <gasps> no, no, please, no. <laughs> She's... Thibodeau, you, after seeing the movement in the rubble, filled with hope, and then you hear the and feel the ground just begin to shake around you and look up. And 60 feet above you, a horribly ugly head with two just terribly terrifying dull, unintelligent eyes looks directly at you. 
it's going to stay right there. Uh, maybe it's going to use this movement to just move a little bit more right up the top. That's its turn. But the other starts coming around this way. Three, four. And is like lumbering over the bugbear as the bugbear looks up at it and begins pointing as well and points out to where you are, Miros. You can see this huge head just like looking left and right. And Miros, you feel seen. You feel seen. <laughs> and um, Thibodeau, <laughs> you feel surrounded. Rooster, still invisible. Worthy, still hidden. Miros, it's your turn. What would you like to do? I see this ha happening, and uh, I I say, Oh, oh my God. Somebody's got to help them. Somebody's got to help them. And I use the dash action to run as fast as I can towards the closest giant. <gasps> saying, hey, hey, over here, over here. And like waving my arms frantically, <sighs> do I get to the giant? You get right up to the giant. You are now running I, as fast as you can across this field and are right at its I, foot. I d did I need the dash action for that? You did. It was sixty feet. So this is like the Great. end of your action. You've got a bonus action if you've got it. Uh, I want to climb the giant. You see, <laughs> Miros. I want to climb see, up and yeah. As worthy, you see get Miros somewhere where it's gonna be on his back. As Miros is running towards the giant, you see him pull out this grappling hook. As he just starts swinging it as fast as he can, in full sprint towards this giant, screaming, trying to get its attention. And you believe that on his next turn, when he has a full action, he's going to try to climb up on top of this giant. Um, Come here, it, you big son of a bitch! See my the, paws on you. It's the ogre's turn. The ogres turn towards the giant. Oh, Jesus. And the This is ogre... gonna be a total party kill. Begins oh. its way towards Miros. Miros, you feel the hot breath and horrible stench of this ogre uh, making its way towards you as it's going to swing out with its great club. Oh, that's damage. What's your AC, Miros? Sorry, 16. 16. Ty goes to the attacker. Fourteen points of bludgeoning damage. Oh. Second one misses, but the other bugbear takes out its javelin. Hits eleven points of piercing damage. So that's a total of... I'm down to 11. Thank you. Worthy Rooster, now, you're watching this, and you see Miros take the full weight of a great club hit right to his back. He slams him down to the ground, but he pops back up, still trying to look for some kind of purchase on this ogre, and that's when the javelin comes and slams into his leg. It almost knocks him down. He breaks off the major, the larger part of the javelin uh, with his other thigh and throws it to the side as he's still trying to get up on this hill giant. <sighs> Worthy, your turn. Mm -hmm. What would you like to do? How far away am I from the hill giant? You are... 70 feet away. Uh, how far away am I from that ogre? 
Oh, I'm sorry. You are that... 80 feet away from the hill giant. You're 70 feet away from the ogre. And you are 45 feet away from the bugbear. Okay, and how far away am I from that ogre that's down in the trees? 65 feet. All right. I would like to move five feet closer to that ogre down in the trees and cast command. Excellent. Which wisdom. is a wisdom saved 14 on that ogre by the trees. Nine. They fail. Great. Um, I cast command on this ogre and I sort of hold out my hand and I speak the command attack and then I take my hand and I kind of go and like point it towards the hill giant. Great. You see this ogre stop in its tracks and look up and look towards the hill giant and it lets out this huge roar and begins to move towards it on its turn. Uh, It will begin to attack the hill giant. Nice. Anything else you want to do, Worthy? Uh, I'd like to use the rest of my movement to creep down through the woods closer towards the abbey, but still staying in the woods. You have 25 feet of movement. You're going to get to Mm -hmm. there. Great. Okay. I'm stressed out. Are you? Rooster, your turn. You are invisible. Rooster vomits a little bit in their mouth. It's like green. It's like a little, but like no one sees it. Yeah. Okay. No one sees it. Here's my question. If I go grab Pee Wee, will he become invisible again? No. Yes. No. Yeah. Gosh. Any anything you're carrying would become invisible, but yes. But uh, don't you? I mean, whatever. <laughs> do what do what you want, but. Uh, I want our whole party not to die. That's what I want. I want I want Captain Chowder to be here. I want this all to be a big nightmare because I really feel like we're all going to die. Okay. I am raging. I am reckless. And I don't know whether to distract this one fucking giant or to go after fucking Miros. Rooster is in... Their brain? What is Worthy doing with the face? Don't go after me, Rose. You're going to get yourself right in the middle. Says of Worthy that to whole themselves. Wor- Rooster, don't do what are you it, doing? Don't do, it, don't do it, Rooster. Don't Rooster, do it. Rooster, what are you doing? Rooster, Rooster. is going to. Um, this is what I. Uh, fuck. Okay, I would like to please use, use my. Okay, I want to go uninvisible. Okay. Well, that'll happen. Um, that'll happen as soon as you hit something. So. Right. No, but I, it's like uh, it's for drama. Yeah, but you could get like a. a I don't. Off. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think that you can unvisible yourself. I'm gonna Great. say that. Okay, I'm gonna take the oath bow. Great. And I'm gonna whisper to it. Be true and kill the hill giant. And I'm gonna aim it at the giant up above Pee Wee, right in the eye socket. Go ahead and roll. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. That's a. Listening, it was, it was a 20. A, and if it's a crit, then I get to hit it again. <laughs> Cause I don't want it Rooster whispers <laughs> under their invisible breath. <laughs> it just goes, it goes into the giant skull and just ricochets inside, <laughs> scrambling its brain. Can we read the description of the oath bow for those listening and possibly also the DM? Oh. Yeah. Uh, so when you knock an arrow on this bow, it whispers an elvish swift defeat to my enemies. When you use this enemy, to ma- when you use this weapon to make a ranged attack. You can command it um, to uh, make an enemy become a sworn enemy until it dies. Uh, You can have only one such sworn enemy at a time. When it dies, you choose a new one. When the ranged attack roll is rolled, you have advantage 
on your sworn enemy. In addition, your target gains no benefit from cover other than total cover, and you suffer no disadvantage due to long range. If the attack hits, your sworn enemy takes an extra 3d6 piercing damage. Okay, so go ahead and roll damage on the Oath Bow. Seven I'm going to cry. I'm um, crying right now. Seven. Wait, can you add Bardic Inspiration to, dam no, to damage? Or no. Ah. So, this, you guys see no. um, Miros looking to your left, Thibodeau looking behind you. You see Rooster, bam, in full bow pose uh, as an arrow flies through the air. And <laughs> this... <laughs> As this arrow flies up and slams into the eye of this hill giant. The hill giant is now trying to get the thing that's in its eye out. It's just roaring out. And as it roars, all of you have to cover your ears because it's so loud. And it takes 16 points of damage. And Rooster now... Uh, just to be clear, you have advantage on every attack against that hill giant with the oath bow. As well, you hear, I would... uh huh. Albranthier's voice whisper into your ear. Swift death to my enemies. Oh my God! What the fuck was that? <laughs> and okay. then, because I am a great ma weapon master, I did a critical hit. I would like to go for the other eyeball, please. Is that possible? Um, it has to be with a melee weapon, I think. Melee weapon. Melee Great. weapon. Great, can I go for the other eyeball with a hand axe? Uh, as a melee strike. Okay, great. Can I go to the... Uh... It's out of range. What do you want to do? Mm-hmm. Okay, so it has to be a melee attack as a bonus. Yep. But you haven't moved how, yet. How? Okay, great. So how close am I to the uh, bugbear right there? Uh, the bugbear looking at you now as you approach, as you uh, appear. You're 20 feet. I'd like to move... Okay, can I move five feet and, and do green poison? Or move... Move five feet and just do green poison. Yeah, I'll allow it. Yeah, absolutely. Great. You, uh, this is the, f you're finishing your throw up. You're so stressed out. You just like yeah. turn and you're going to hit him with a melee strike and you just vomit out your poison breath, which, uh, is, um, it's a constitution 12. Okay, so just to make this actually happen, you're gonna come right up on this bugbear, okay? Okay. Um, and that means that it's gonna hit the hill giant too. Yes! Um, Constitution 12. So the bugbear is going to save, but I still think they take half damage maybe? We'll yeah. see. And the hill giant. Shit. Gets but a I seven. have advantage? Mm, no. Yes. No, you're not invisible anymore. They saw you. Um, uh, but it was so surprising for them. Guys, I'm allowing. Okay. I'm, <laughs> uh, let's see. Our DM is trying really hard for us not to die right yeah. now. Our DM is amazing. Very close. Yeah. Keep keep those. Keep them coming. Um, we've got that a was pretty six. Lame, but so they take uh, the ogre takes three points of damage, um, and this hill giant takes six points but they are poisoned and uh, I feel like that breath weapon a poisoned really creature the hill giant's poisoned and a poisoned creature has disadvantage on attack uh, on attacks yeah I did it and ability checks sweet okay. <laughs> awesome Great. so nice. um up nice. next, we have... I'm about to get murdered by these guys, but, you know, cool. Thibodeau, you're up. Okay. Uh, I want to I wanna use Dissonant Whispers. Uh, with the Oath Bow, do you get advantage on any giants now, or just that one just giant? Just that one giant. That's your enemy now. 
I gotta get that giant out of here. I'm gonna use dis dissonant whispers on that giant, and uh, it's a uh, wisdom save. Okay. Fourteen. Okay, here it comes. The hill giant rolls a seventeen. It saves. Uh. Fuck. Hot dice. DM's got hot dice. Um. Half damage. Okay. Um. On a success, on a fail, I, I don't think it does anything on a fail. Did you give that bugbear a negative three, by the way? On my poison damage, because it gets half? Yes. Thanks. Yeah, nothing happens. Okay, nothing <sighs> happens. Uh, you whisper out to it, and it's just so enraged trying to get this arrow out of its eye that you don't even know if it's making anything in. It's the the volume of its roars. Are, it's making it hard to concentrate on the spell. Can um, I still do a cantrip? Yes. Um, as long as it's a bonus action. Oh, no, never mind. Yeah. No. Okay. Bardic inspiration? I cast, I'm, I'm going to give Bardic Inspiration to Oren. Nice. Great. Uh, so you, seeing exactly where Oren might just be in the rubble, you uh, sing a little ditty, and it makes it through. Oren, you're feeling your arms shake a little bit less. Uh, hope flooding back in. Um, Oren. And I'm out of Bardic Inspiration now. <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay. oh, my God. It's the bugbear's turn. Um, Should we run? <laughs> this bugbear uh, is going to strike out at you, Rooster. Yeah. With its morning star. It's going to be a 16 to hit. Yeah, my AC is 13. Oh, I don't like any of this. 15 this points of result. damage as the spikes of this morning star rip into your sides. And it is going to I have 13 hit points. Stay there. This bugbear is going to run uh, just south and throw another javelin. How many javelins does it have? Five javelins. It's going to throw another javelin. Oh, that's damage. So sorry. Clicking the wrong things. D and D Beyond makes it so simple. Um, first, where's the attack roll? Oh, this is javelin. Here it comes. Oof. A natural twenty. No. Miros. 18 points of piercing damage. Miros, trying to get up a little bit onto the foot, has managed to just climb up towards the ankle of this hill giant as a javelin strikes him directly in the chest. And he sort of falls off of the giant and staggers black uh, and he tries to pull the javelin out and he manages to do it but there's blood pouring out of his chest cavity and dark red blood and he kind of staggers down to his knees and he looks around and he goes get out of here run for it run for it and swim he falls face down in the mud, and Miros is dead. Is he dead or is zero hit points? He's dead. Dead. NPC. NPC. Fuck. But he felt like a PC. It's the ogre's turn. The ogre, seeing Miros fallen, is going to, because they're not very smart, 
slam into him again with its great club. With advantage. Hits. And again. Just slamming into this body now. Up next, Worthy. Uh, what about the ogre that I cast command on? Thank you. To attack. The ogre begins yes. to move towards the hill giant and throws a javelin. It goes wide. Just rolled past that 22. Flies wide. All right. Um, how far away am I from the hill giant? 90 feet. All right. Uh, and Rooster, are you down? No, but I, I, I only have a 13 hit points, I think. All right. Oh, okay. Uh... I am going to, if I get to, can I move to right behind the ogre that I've commanded? Yes. How far away will that be from the giant? Okay, you can get, if just if you just want to use your movement, you can get 30 feet here. Okay. And then how far away will that take me from the giant? 60 feet. Amazing. All right, I'm going to move down there by that ogre and I'm going to use my infernal legacy. I take out a little bit of bat fur and I speak a word when put some tar and pitch on it and cast darkness at a point where a 15 foot sphere of this black, black darkness just kind of starts going from a point right in the ogre's forehead. In the hill giant's forehead? In the hill giant's forehead, yes. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm really... No, I'm really <laughs> upset. It's okay. Scared. Just what, check in. What's the, what's the range on it? It's a 60-foot range. I'm sorry. What's uh, the radius or the diameter of the sphere? 15 feet okay, radius. It's very high up. Okay. This sphere. Fit. Okay. Great. So, um, this dark bubble emerges around the ogre's head and you can i'm sorry the now i'm doing it the hill giant's <laughs> head about 60 feet up in the air as worthy you are beelining it behind this ogre who's now friendly you see the bugbear to your left look and uh notice you coming out of the woods and as a bonus action uh how far away am I from Rooster right now? Checking. 85. Dang it. Uh... I'm going to do it. I'm going to cast Shield of Faith on myself. Good call. Protect the healer. That's right. As a... glowing field of uh, sparkling white bluish light surrounds you. Rooster. Your turn. Really? <laughs> you feel uh, the pain of the wound in your side as you look down and the bugbear as you look up is smiling. Behind the bugbear, you see the fallen Miros as the other ogre lifts its club out of the now just bloody mess that was Miros Elbrin. I'm going to get out of there, get out of there, Worthy says to herself. I'm going to disengage. Excellent move. And that sucks. 
So I'm going to disengage is my action. And I'm going to dash. I mean, I can't dash, but I'm going to take my movement about 40 feet away. Yeah. I want to go and then I'm going to look up at that hill giant and I'm going to say, I got an arrow with your name on it, motherfucker! <laughs> Completely allowed within your turn. Fantastic. You see, that's the moment when the hill giant finally, like, with its trying to kind of get a really big splinter out, takes the arrow out of its eye and with its other eye looks at you. Now, is it is it blind in, in one, one eye, eye. now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that is that is that condition changed that the way that giant works now? Um, I'm gonna say that that was such an awesome crit and such a specifically called shot that this hill giant um, is going to have disadvantage on its attacks. I'll say that. Um. It does have multi-attack. Oh, can I say something else though instead? Okay. Can I say I want to I want to go like this and go chew on this eight feet motherfucker, like that, Great. just like okay. really taunting. Okay. Like make him really hungry. Okay. For me. Um. <laughs> it is the bugbear's turn. No. Did we miss one of my saving throws? We did. We did. We did. Go ahead. Thank you, Oren. Oren, make a strength saving throw. Yes, sir. As this gets harder and harder and harder. No, shit. Four. Thibodeau, you see this small pocket of rubble collapse. (laughs) Oren, you feel the full weight of these stones fall onto your body, and you... No long, you can no longer breathe. This is the worst ever. I hate it. Even though I'm smiling, it's because I'm uncomfortable, says Brewster. Well, <laughs> oh god, <clears throat> I um, not only missed Oren, I unfortunately missed a hill giant turn. No, 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 you didn't. That's on you, buddy. <laughs> The hill giant has gotten the arrow out of its eye and sees you, Thibodeau, and Rooster now. The hill giant is going to, let's see. This is difficult terrain. (sighs) Is going to move. Let's see. One, two, three, (gasps) four. And is going to attack you, Rooster. Okay. With disadvantage, and that's really good. This is my death, it is a good way to die. That is with disadvantage. That's really great that that happened. Because that was a crit. (laughs) No. no. Oh. No. A For 20. those on the podcast, it rolled a twenty. A twelve plus an eight, but so it wasn't crit. But I think I will die now. <laughs> Rooster unconscious. Oh God. Its second attack lands on you, Thibodeau. With disadvantage. Hits. 22. 19 points of damage slams on top of you.
I wish we had let Oren die. <laughs> <laughs> How many hit points you got, Tib? Uh, hold on, I'm doing it now. Uh, wait, what, how do I, it's been so long since I've taken damage. <laughs> <laughs> you have 39 so I, points of, you have 39 hit points. I have 20, I have 20 hit points left. Okay. Please run, everyone just run. Let Rooster die. No. Tibido. No. It's your turn. Uh, I'm gonna try Oh no, to, uh, it's not. No, it's not. The other one has to move, but it is stumbling around in this cloud of darkness, unable to see. And I'm gonna say it just kind of like walks around in a circle, trying to bat away this magical darkness that's in front of its eyes. Go ahead, Thibodeau. Okay, I'm gonna try Dissonant Whispers again on this giant. Uh, level heal rooster. At level heal rooster. Two. It's okay. I can do it. I can do a death saving throw. Um, because I got to get the giant away, or we're both dead. <laughs> yeah. Um, Go ahead. It's a um. Wisdom. Yeah, fourteen. Wisdom save of fourteen coming from the giant. Six. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so that's uh, at level two, that is 3d6 psychic damage. And it moves away. And the, uh, the creature must uh, immediately use its reaction to move as far as its speed allows away oh. from me. Okay, let's get some damage. Uh, okay. I feel like every muscle in my body is tight. Like I keep trying to relax other muscles and then other muscles just begin to get tight again. I don't know whether to cry or laugh. Yeah. I, for those listening on the podcast, two of us are fully crying right now. <laughs> 13 points of damage yes. on, this, on this ogre, uh, or giant, this hill, hill giant. Hill giant podcasters, hill giant. He the hill giant. giant. And, it's, and it's running away as fast as its speed will allow. It runs directly away from you and its speed is uh, 40 feet. So it's going to go off the map. One, two, three. And you get an opportunity attack, Thibodeau, as a reaction um, with a melee yeah. weapon. Yep. I will uh, you can try use to my rapier. Stab it in its foot. Where is that? Here it is. Where's my rapier? For people on the podcast, Sorry. he's looking for his rapier. <laughs> this is the wrong day for Chowder to. I know, God. freaking Chowder. Who cares about go. kids? You got it. I'm just kidding. Did you did you roll for me? I'm gonna go. Yeah, here we go. Okay, thank you. I couldn't find it. Yes. Maybe I don't know. Thirteen. They have a sixteen. Ties their oh, armor class. Go ahead, and I'm gonna roll some damage for you. Five points of damage. Every little bit counts. Yep. Um, okay. Um, okay. Um, do I have... Hold on a second. I, I just want to make sure that I can't use... Can I, I... I think I... Because I have proficiency with a medicine kit, can I use it as a bonus action? I, 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 I want to... I, no, it's going to take a full action. Oh, God. To, like, suture wounds? Yeah, yeah, You have yeah, proficiency, yeah. so you can use it, and you're very... Look, that's a huge play you just made. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oren, I'm also remember, y'all. you have a bard, bardic inspiration for plus six next right. time you roll. And ding, that, but that... Ding, ding. Uh, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't it wouldn't have, have been a helped. waste. Um, yeah. So, Bugbear moves around the corner has a javelin, throws it at you, Thibodeau. How many javelins do these guys have? Five. Five each. Fuck. <laughs> I was like, oh. I shouldn't have disengaged. Their javelins are gone. Now, now what are they 21. Do? God damn it. Oh, God. 17 plus 4, 21. 10. A javelin right. just hits you in your arm. 
uh, searing pain shooting through your body as blood starts to drip down. And the other one, uh, Bugbear, is going to rush you, Rooster, and swing out with its morning star. Do you mean worthy? Thank you, worthy. I'm so stressed out. 15 to hit. Uh, my AC is 16. As you, I'm just going to say, uh, catch its arm and punch it, because I'm feeling super yeah. full of metal. <laughs> <laughs> As it almost knocks it free. Uh, we need to as, get you a catchphrase worthy. Yeah, yeah. You just say like uh, catchphrase and punch its arm. <laughs> <laughs> I and, don't want to be here. I don't have any friends. Were these catchphrases are just honest admittances, uh, screamed very loudly. Um, finally, uh, that's the end of the round. Which means that Oren, you ooh, make a strength saving throw. Right. Use use bardic inspiration. With disadvantage, unfortunately. I didn't want to say it, but make it with disadvantage. Oh. Yeah, it's not gonna help. It's Should not I do it help. one more time? I mean, just for the audience, I guess. That was a nine. I rolled a nine. And a sixteen. And a sixteen. Oren. Unconsciously, you're aware that you have one more round of breath. It's at this point, Thibodeau, you seeing, I mean, just this horrible wound in your arm. You can feel the ribs broken on the other side of you. Worthy, you heard some kind of loud cry as you could in the distance see Rooster now just unconscious on the ground. Miros is dead. Captain Chowder is off trying to save the children. As Worthy and Thibodeau, you see something strange in the sky. There seems to be a human flying through the air in what it looks to be this ball gown. I mean, it's like this cream silk ball gown with this red, you can see it as they're approaching, this like red trim flying through the air, arms out, lands directly uh, on the ground, um, Next to you, Worthy. And this woman with a tight um, beehive of white and black hair and these just gorgeous dangling earrings lands on the ground next to you, looks at you and says, looks like you all need some help. And that's where we're going to end it for this week. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. We are looking to get to the conclusion of the attack on Golden Fields. And I have to say that the familiars are in a precarious spot. I would first and foremost like to thank Zach Appleman for joining us once again as Oren. And really stellar work tonight. Didn't <laughs> you for, didn't die yet. For uh, Worthy, ladies you and gentlemen. Gold Miles Room, Josh Leg <laughs> joining us. Smile. Just yes, Gold Room, oh my God. Bringing us home with some amazing music. Um, I'm excited to see what happens next week. We're so happy that you've stuck with us this whole time. And uh, I'm going to go uh, take a nap. My head over back. I have a then, head over. Uh, I'm going to start planning to see what happens with this next session. Luckily, a friend has joined, and maybe we can also get Captain Chowder back from babysitting Ugh. and coming to help us out. But until then, thank you so much for joining us. And as always, our intent is all for your delight. Thanks for watching, y'all.